friends with benefit strategy what is it and how can you use it to grow your property consultancy that's what we're talking about in this video and to give you an example of this a few months ago i was walking down the street in the city center and i, I came across this huge construction project and just in case you're wondering no this wasn't the project i saw i i didn't have my phone with me to take a picture so i borrowed this one of the olympic stadium in london just to show the scale i'm talking about so normally you might expect a project to be run by one main company and then lots of small smaller contractors each provide the separate trades like joinery electrical plumbing etc except this project actually had three main companies and they were all sharing the project between them Normally, these firms would be competing against each other, but this, this project was so big that it was too big for any one of them to take on by themselves. So it needed them all to team up and deliver the project together. But this is something that goes on a lot in the corporate world, but you don't see it. It happens in all industries. Another example is with Virgin Trains. I talk about this one a lot because it's, it's a perfect example of how this strategy can really benefit everyone. So as far as I know, Virgin Trains don't operate any trains anymore. But back when they did, a few years ago, when you travelled on a Virgin train, you wouldn't know that it was anyone different to Virgin that was delivering that transport service. service. But the Virgin Group is made up of about 47 different companies across all sorts of industries, from airlines to banking. So how is it possible that they could deliver all of these services and still provide a good level of service and the answer is they couldn't. Somewhere they dropped the ball and things would go wrong. Now, if you're flying thousands of people around the world every day, you don't really want anything to go wrong. So how did they do it? Well, the answer is Virgin Trains was actually a joint venture between Virgin and Stagecoach. Now, the Virgin Group are a product creation company. If you, if you haven't seen my video on the four types of company, go and watch that next to, to understand what the right strategy is for, for each of the four types of company and where you'd fit into, this, into using this strategy. But coming back to Virgin Trains, it was actually Stagecoach. Stagecoach provided the day-to-day -day running of the trains, just working under the Virgin brand. And reading between the lines, the reason they did this was if, let's say, something didn't go well with the trains company, if they're working under the Virgin brand, Stagecoach's reputation isn't affected. They can walk away and not look back. And if you look at any of the marketing of Virgin Trains, you'll never see any mention of Stagecoach. It's only when you look deeper, such as in the financial accounts, right back to when they first set, up, set it up, that you'll see the Stagecoach name owning part of the company. The other key point is about knowing each other's strengths. For example, Stagecoach doesn't really have a very public profile compared with Richard Branson and Virgin. Whereas Virgin is very public and always seems to be in the spotlight, their brand is, is, is their value. Borrowing that brand, even with nothing else, is worth a lot. And that, that will determine whether something is a success or a failure. But we're only talking about large corporate businesses here. The, the same could be done with your own business. The key is finding skill sets or assets that benefit, benefit each party and let you achieve a certain objective. If I'm good at sales and you're good at delivery, well, it would make sense for us to work together. I can do the selling, you can do the delivery, and then we both get what we want. That's the key benefit of using this strategy. It lets everyone bring their strongest skill to the market, but also the opportunity to, to deliver some much bigger projects that, than they'd be able to do alone. So how can you use this strategy to grow your property consultancy? Let me tell you a story. I was out for a walk the other day and a thought popped into my head about a friend that was using this strategy without even knowing it. He runs a plumbing business and his daughter just got married to a guy named Andy. Now, Andy owns an air conditioning company. And both companies are small. They both employ a couple of staff each and the air conditioning company had been going through a, a dry spell. They were struggling to get new clients in the last year. So after John's daughter got married, he decided to team up with his new son-in-law and start asking his clients whether they wanted anyone to serve their air conditioning. And it was, it was more just a way to help Andy get through this slow period. 
But rather than just referring the clients to his son-in-law, the, the clients wanted to deal with John because they knew him already. And so John and his son-in-law, Andy, they decided to set up a new joint venture business together to provide this combined plumbing and air conditioning service through. It means that John can sell air conditioning to his clients and Andy can sell plumbing services to his clients. They both keep their existing businesses, but this new joint venture company can be used when a client wants, wants the other services. And it got me thinking, we, we all probably do that to some extent, and we do it without knowing. If you've got a family member, maybe a cousin or a brother, or even a close friend, and you both provide similar services, you'll normally do some arrangement where, where you team up for, for different projects. But the same can be done with other businesses too. And you'll probably get more benefit from doing it externally from, from your inner circle because you can access different types of clients. Probably have, have access to other types of experience uh, and product offerings as well. So how would you put it together? Or to answer that, just think about firstly, what both parties want to get out of the arrangement. Secondly, what each party needs to put into the arrangement. What needs to happen for the project to be a success? For example, if it's a client sharing arrangement, then both parties have to be willing to openly bring their client list into the project. If you don't get this right, it can affect the, the whole viability of the project. I've been involved with people that, that we assumed would play their part, but they had no buy-in. They just wanted the upside without doing anything for it. Have you ever seen these big world championship poker tournaments where you can win $10 million? Well, uh, they, they don't just give you free entry into these tournaments. Everyone has to buy into the tournament to be a part of it. And it will be the same with your new project together. Everyone has to play their individual part for the project to be a success. Then think about how you do it. If it was someone in your own family, what would happen day to day? If you plan out the process of what each side needs to do to fill their side of the deal, that saves any misunderstandings later. Then it's just a, just a case of writing that up into a legal agreement and setting up the new business. And this is actually what, what we do all the time. We're a product creation company, just like Virgin. So we set up these joint venture projects. And most importantly, we then drive it to make sure each party follows through on their side of the deal. Sometimes, if you don't have that third party driving it, things tend not to happen after that initial excitement and enthusiasm has, has died down. And that's how you use a friends with benefit strategy to grow your property consultancy.